Well, hello. Today, we're going to set initial timing and total advanced timing on this 1969 Corvette. This Corvette has a 350 Chevy engine in it. Now, what am I saying when I say initial timing? Initial timing is basically for startup. That's basically all initial timing is, to initially start the engine. Now, but we, we want more than that. We really want total timing. And total timing is timing in perfect sequence with the number one cylinder at the time of spark during all aspects of operation. So when I say all aspects of operation, I mean starting up, driving on standard roads, and at highway speeds. It's the perfect spark at all those operations. That's total advanced timing. Total advanced timing, in my view, is the most important. Initial timing is just to start the engine. However, to have efficient operations with fuel economy, the best timing is total advanced timing. We'll do both today, and I'll show you how to set it all up. So today, we're going to do some timing on this 1969 Corvette. It has a 350 Chevy engine in it. And the reason we're going to do that is because when I did the timing, I went and looked at different videos and never did one single video have a complete procedure on how to time the Chevy engine. Portions would leave me hanging without a procedure in which I would have to go look at another video or several videos to finally see what I needed to do. So we're going to set initial timing okay what I will do is just go ahead and pull away my air cleaner here so I can get at the engine I will walk around the car now I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the distributor hold down bolt right here and remember I said I was just gonna list Loosen it a little bit so that it will hold as I turn it slightly. Otherwise it will rotate as the engine is moving. And I want to be able to do everything all by myself. And my goal is to rotate this distributor cap either left clock, I mean, clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise being this way, counterclockwise being that way. Now, to plug my vacuum line, I simply go right here, and mine's pretty simple because it's just loosely put on there, but enough to seal it. And for me, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this with a golf tee, and I'm going to take this plug right here and plug right here. That way I know I have a positive seal right here. That should be plugged for initial timing and total advanced timing. Otherwise you'll get an inaccurate reading on your timing light. I removed the spark plug wire right under here and I put a piece of paper towel just slightly in the hole where the spark plug wire goes. I went and turned the engine just one little crank, not enough to start it but just enough to turn it, and when the compression blew that paper towel out of the hole, then I knew that that cylinder was at top dead center. Let's take a quick look at the timing mark. Right down here. You look at this right here. Now see this white line right here? That is where we want to be. This white line right here at top dead center. Right here is zero top dead center. And what that means is the spark on the number one cylinder, which is right here, and the spark plug is right here, is at the perfect position for combustion. And top dead center would be this white line right here aligned with this red mark right here. Now the way to do that is to simply just turn your key several times or put a socket 
on the pulley right down in this area right here and turn it until that is at top dead center. Now that's a good starting point. And what that means is we'll have combustion on number one cylinder when we turn the key. Now what will be required is additional timing and that's what I will show you here in a little bit. So that right there will have easy combustion when I turn the key probably around that area right there. In fact I'll try to turn it here several times to get it to top dead center. There we go. Now I was able to just turn the key and simply get that mark pretty close to top dead center with the red mark right here. So see this is a white mark and here is a red mark at zero top dead center. And what that means is this number one cylinder right under here is meeting perfectly with the rotor in my distributor. So that rotor hits this number one spark plug wire right here at the exact same time as combustion. So this is a pretty good timing like actually this is a craftsman and I'll show you how to adjust the uh, the components on this timing light after we hook it up. So what we'll do is we'll take our power wire right here, red, and I'm just going to go ahead and hook that on the bottom of my alternator power line. And I'm going to hook this negative to the negative here, uh, right there. Now what you could also do is hook negative to a just a simple ground like right here. And I will take the number one right here, this contraption right here, and put it right around the number one cylinder spark plug wire just like this. And what that does is it senses the spark coming out of that wire and signal signal sends a signal to the light. So look at this. Here we go. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure it's in the right adjustment. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. Is that zero right now? So currently, I'm at top dead center without the engine running. There we go. Next, I'll go ahead and start the engine and start adjusting initial timing. Now, keep in mind, this should be done when the engine is already warm and at operating temperature. I simply take the light that I had and point it to the area right here. So notice that it is at, not at top dead center. So we'll go ahead and adjust that to top dead center by simply moving the distributor to the left or to the right. See how that moves? Right there is top dead center with TVC right at the red mark. That is great for initial starting. Now remember I said initial starting. Next we'll do total advanced timing. Now our real goal is total advanced timing. Right here is a humanic, humanic balancer right here. Right there in that area right there. And right here is the marker. Top dead center with the red at zero. Top dead center. In order to get total advanced timing, what we need to do is to get the engine operations or the engine RPMs to about 2,500 RPMs at normal operating temperature. Once we get that, then we simply dial in the timing gun to 36 degrees. And then what we're going to do is align our timing mark and let it advance to right here 
at top dead center. Now, now what I'm going to do is make sure it's in the right adjustment. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. Is that zero right now? So when they say you need to advance your timing to 36 degrees, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this to 36 degrees. And this will be 36 degrees. Now that is the perfect mark for combustion so that combustion is met through all aspects of the motor. That means low RPMs and uh, idle RPMs and a high RPMs when I'm on the highway. 36 degrees is the perfect mark. And my goal is to have it at 36 degrees and when I push the timing to see that, see that blinking light? That mark will be somewhere around there when I rev up the RPMs to about two and a half thousand RPMs or three thousand RPMs it should be somewhere around that same mark and you'll see that move when I start the engine and I'll show you that here in a minute so currently I'm at top dead center without the engine running I will start it up and then we'll go to 36 degrees out and then we'll see with the engine run revved up about two and a half thousand RPMs to three thousand RPMs where we're at then Once done and everything's good, we should have a perfect fuel mixture at combustion. We'll go ahead and give it a start and see how it sounds then. Let's just give this key a little turn. How does that sound? Now what that'll do for me is give me combustion and the perfect fuel, and air, and spark combustion at the right time for all eight cylinders. That is supposed to be the perfect mark for the 350 Chevy engine.